I'm very happy with this investment. I'm, I've been buying a lot more uh, of a company that is very closely related to Naspers, which I'm about to reveal in a moment. Hey everyone, so I do this every quarter. I look at the things that have changed for me personally in my portfolio. Now I've had to bite the bullet with the oil tankers and I'm gonna explain that in detail in a moment. All right, payeheli. So before I start, a quick shout out to Neil at the Adventurous Investor YouTube channel. I appreciate your support on my channel, mate, a lot. You are a legend. So here's a table showing my performance as of Q4 2021, or the end of Q4 anyway. Now, if you know, the first thing I notice anyway is the in the far right-hand column, the percentage change on Q3. There's been some pretty big uh, drops, like down 6%, down 27%, down 41% for Redbubble just on the quarter. So there's been some significant fluctuations in the market here. And I think that's to be expected generally with the stock market. We're gonna not have a nice smooth ride. We're gonna get these big swings up and down. So um, I've got obviously Berkshire Hathaway and OTC markets are up well, 24 and 23% respectively. So that's also a big movement. Um, now, Skyworks, I'm not doing anything with Skyworks. Berkshire Hathaway, not doing anything with them as well. These are long-term holdings of mine. The sales that I've told you about earlier with TK Tankers, DHT Holdings, Euronap. Now, let's talk a little bit about the oil tankers. Now, in previous videos, I said I really wanted to hold these oil tankers to at least 2023 for the thesis to play out in the oil tanker space. Unfortunately, I've had to sell these and it really hurt me to do this, but I'm only doing it because I had an unbelievable opportunity that I had to raise some money for to go and invest in. Now, if I didn't have that opportunity, I would still be having the oil tankers in my portfolio because I do think 2023 and beyond is gonna look pretty good for them, but I had to make a decision. When I was looking at my list of companies that I have in my portfolio, I just, I think the oil tankers were probably the weakest link in this portfolio. So. They had to be the first ones to go. Now, the opportunity that I had is actually in a private business. It wasn't in a public markets company. So uh, it's essentially I started another business and I needed to raise some money to get that off the ground and moving. So uh, I, I really needed this cash. And essentially, this was just about the numbers. The private investment that I was making, I'm very confident that I'm going to get a very good return on my investment from that. And from the oil tankers, although I still think I'm, I would get a good return on my investment, I'm just not so, uh, wasn't so confident about it compared to the other opportunity. It was as simple as that. Now for Dropbox, it was actually down 27%. That's a pretty dramatic drop. I looked over the earnings report. There's not really justified why it would fall 27%. So I'm just gonna put that down to market fluctuations. Let's let's see what happens in 2022. I'm pretty happy with Dropbox for the long term anyway. Markel was up just 4%, which is nothing really. It moves around a little bit. It hasn't got down to my purchase price for quite some time where I bought it at $1,000, but uh, I would probably be considering buying more at about $1,000 anyway. Nintendo, uh, it stayed about the same for the quarter. I'm still down quite a bit on that position, but I'm still okay with that. I would buy more at about $50 for the Nintendo. Shinikin has come down quite a lot in the quarter, down 19%. There's not, look, I've had a look at their uh, earnings report as well. And their earnings report wasn't very strong. So I actually understand why the uh, the stock price has fallen here. I'm going to hold this on, hold this one for a bit longer still. Uh, I'm going to keep analyzing this company. I'm hoping to hold this for the long term, but uh, I will keep reassessing it quarter on quarter anyway. OTC Markets is up quite a lot, 23% from the quarter. They had a really good earnings report come out. So uh, look, OTC Markets is, is just hitting it out of the park quarter on quarter. And yeah, I'll be keeping that one for a long time. Uh, Red Bubble. This is the biggest fall in the quarter for me personally. Uh, down 41% from uh, where it ended up at the end of Q3. So look, I actually think this is just market fluctuations as well. Red Bubble is a very volatile stock, uh, and that's just the way it's going to be. I could easily see it going up 40% in the next quarter or down another 40%. I have no idea what's going to happen. I think when I bought it at three dollars forty-five, there's a good price, and I think that over the next five years, that will look better and better. Uh, Alibaba is down just 2% on the quarter for me. Uh, I bought it at what, 191 is my average purchase price. I've been buying that in with by selling put options and my average price now is about 191. Recent price being about 130 or something like that. 
uh, obviously a big down position in my portfolio. You'll see how much this makes up of my portfolio a little bit later. NASPERS is the last one here on the list that I had from the previous quarter, down about 8%. Uh, I, I'm very happy with this investment. I'm, I've been buying a lot more uh, of a company that is very closely related to NASPERS, which I'm about to reveal in a moment. So just one new buy for the quarter, and that is Process. And what I've been doing is I've been selling put options to lower my cost basis. And I was able to do this on Interactive Brokers. That's my preferred broker. If you wanna take a look at a demo account, please go through the link in my description as it supports me running this channel. Having a broker that has low fees and gives you access to international markets, I think is very critical. And Interactive Brokers is by far the best. Now, I already have a big investment in NASPERS. So I, the reason I'm buying Process, well, essentially it comes down to these reasons. The best company in the world, I think, is Tencent, and Process owns 28% of that. Now, not only do I think Tencent is below its fair value, but Process is a further 30% below the Tencent assets that they hold. And there's lots of other interesting assets that we're getting for free in this investment. Long-term minded management team, both at Process and Tencent, is very encouraging. And NASPERS, which owns Process, has an even bigger discount, but I couldn't buy the put options with NASPERS, Plus, I don't know if NASPERS or Process is going to perform better. They both should. So I'm happy to split my investment between the two of them. Now, NASPERS and Process aren't without their controversy. They are being heavily accused of destroying capital, but I think time will tell. I think as long as the stake in 10 cent remains, I can rest pretty easy. The CEO actually very recently has been buying the stock. I think he bought about $10 million worth, and he's actually very heavily incentivized for the performance of the Process and NASPERS stock price. Then of course we have the super investors which are involved with this as well. So we've got Monish Fabrai, Robert Vinal, the Sequoia Fund. I wouldn't be surprised if there are many more than this too. So I think the 10 year destination for NASPERS and Process looks a little bit like this. So we have their stake in Tencent and Tencent is this apex spawner and then it has stakes in C Limited, Pinduoduo, and WeChat, well, that's just a beast in China. So we get all the Southeast Asia, China tailwinds, that I think are gonna keep propelling Tencent forward over the next decade, which in turn propels NASPERS and Process. And NASPERS and Process gives me a discount into Tencent. I like the fact that all these companies are involved in e-commerce and gaming, and these are gonna be driving that future growth. Tencent could be the biggest company in the world in five, 10 years time, and that's Monish Pabrai's words, not mine. So what I like to do is I like to compare my portfolio's performance since January, 2020 with the S&P 500 since January, 2020, because I think if I wasn't, if I'm not any good at this, uh, like stock picking and picking individual companies, then I really should be putting all my money in the S&P 500. I think that's what I would choose. So I compare myself with what this is the benchmark. And I think after about five years, I'll be able to see whether I know what I'm doing and I can match the benchmark or if not beat it, or whether I should just put all my money in the S&P 500. And as you can see at the moment, if you look at the bottom, well, I have, I was actually really close to the S&P 500 in Q3, but the big change here is that I got belted on essentially Alibaba uh, and NASPERS, and that's brought my returns way down to only about 15% since January, 2020, compared to the 43% of the S&P 500 in that same period. So if I have a look at my returns so far for my companies, I've got uh, Markel, Skyworks, OTC Markets, Dropbox, Berkshire Hathaway, all looking very positive and good. The oil tankers ended up being about um, being about break even on average. So you can call that 0%. But the international stocks, so we've got Process, NASA's, Alibaba, Nintendo, Redbubble, Shinikin. They're all negative since I bought them, which is really interesting to see that the American companies are significantly positive and the international companies are significantly negative. I don't know whether that's like that means anything or not, um, but I think that's just that's an interesting little observation at this point in time. I think this could be dramatically different in 24 months time. So let's just take it easy and not take too many assumptions out of this and let this play out a little bit. I want to hold these long term. Alibaba and NASPERS process in particular. I think they've just been belted, um, they've been beaten up a lot lately, and I just wanna give that some serious time to get it back on their feet because they're fantastic companies. And look, I think all these businesses are really good companies and just given enough time will perform really well. Well, that's the plan anyway. Okay, so summarizing everything so far, I'm down about 20% for the quarter. So that's a pretty ugly quarter for me, but oh well, 
Now, if you've been following my channel along for a while and you've watched my previous portfolio updates, you'll notice I normally have a big piece of the pie in cash, but I am now fully invested and I'm pretty excited about that because it's taken me nearly three years to get to this point. I've got about half my portfolio. I think it's more than half of my portfolio now, specifically in China. That's the NASPAS process Alibaba. I have quite a big stake in Japan. Uh, Redbubble makes Australia. So my international, um, it's quite an international portfolio here with three quarters of my portfolio outside of the US. Uh, I don't know whether that's that's not by design. That's just consider. I've just tried to look at all the best options that I could find. And this is essentially what's happened. It's not because I am in love with China or anything like that. It's just, I think these two companies are seriously undervalued. So I wanted to put a big piece of my portfolio where I think I can get the best return. And that's essentially what's happened here. Now I do have one more company I'm looking at seriously at the moment, but I haven't finished the work on it yet. Potentially I'll take a little off Shinikin and invest in that company because it's also in Japan and I can keep my money in yen without having to do a currency conversion. But anyway, we'll see, I haven't got there yet. Now, hopefully I can just continue making some cash flow in my other private businesses and then deploy that extra cash here into my portfolio. So what do you think? Am I a maniac for being 50% invested into just essentially two companies and those two companies being very heavily involved in China? Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for staying to the end and I will see you next time.